Good evening and welcome to the new Face Off. We're stepping away from the world of debates and putting the news back in prime time. Over the next one hour, we'll get you all the news from India and around the world. My name is Zaka Jacob. First up, the hefty fines under the new Motor Vehicles Act have been giving sleepless nights to many folks. So now, state governments are diluting it to give some relief. Gujarat became the first state to reduce the fines. Chief Minister Vijay Rupani says the new rules should not become an excuse to harass people. Sandanatmak jo kariya wai hai, usme aisa na ho ki public ke upar jada harassment ho aur khas karke two wheelers. The Gujarat government's move was welcomed by commuters. ये अच्छा किया गुजरात सरकार ने गवर्नमेंट ऑफ गुजरात ने ये बहुत अच्छा मतलब एक्शन लिया है फैसला लिया है हेलमेट कंपलसरी हो गया वो बहुत बढ़िया चीज है ये जो फैसला लिया है वो बहुत बहुत ही अच्छा है पंजाब एंड ओडिशा टू हैव पुट द ब्रेक्स ऑन स्टीप फाइंस एंड मेनी अदर नॉन बीजेपी स्टेट्स आर थिंकिंग अबाउट फॉलोइंग सूट व्यवहारिक है उसे हमें करना चाहिए कानून का पालन सब करें ये हमारी जिम्मेदारी है लेकिन जो चीजें प्रैक्टिकल नहीं है उस पर पुनर्विचार करने में किसी को आपत्ति नहीं आनी चाहिए इस पे हमें ये लगा कि ये काम करना बहुत जरूरी है देन वी विल टेक नेसेसरी स्टेप्स। द सेंटर सेज दे हैव नो प्रॉब्लम विद स्टेट्स रिड्यूसिंग द फाइंस एज लॉन्ग एज रोड सेफ्टी इज पैरामाउंट नियम का पालन करने वाले अनुशासित जनसंख्या चाहते हैं The Motor Vehicles Amendment Act has sparked a lot of controversy with multiple states accusing the center of burdening the common man with heavy fines. Maharashtra has become the latest state that will not implement the new Motor Vehicles Act. Let's break down the states that have reduced fines and the ones that are planning to do so. First of the block of course is Gujarat where if you're caught driving without a seat belt in Gujarat you only pay 500 rupees in the rest of India you pay 1000 rupees in Gujarat if you're caught driving without a license you pay 3000 rupees whereas in the rest of the country you pay 5000 rupees if you're caught over speeding in Gujarat it's just 1500 bucks in the rest of the country it's 2000 rupees and Gujarat is not the only state Punjab where if you're caught driving while speaking on a mobile phone then in Punjab you pay just 2000 rupees in the rest of the country you pay 5000 rupees If you're caught for dangerous driving then in Punjab it's 2000 whereas in the rest of India it is 5000 The states that have so far relaxed these fines Odisha has said that for the first 3 months it will not be implementing these fines the states that are considering uh whether to dilute or not and that's a long list from Delhi to Rajasthan Madhya Pradesh to Chhattisgarh West Bengal, Telangana, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, basically just 9 out of 29 states have implemented the new Motor Vehicles Act. Union Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari spoke exclusively to CNN News 18 and he says, well the states are well within their right to reduce the fines, but then the onus of road safety is on them. The state government and the federal the central government both are interested we want to save the life of the people this is not a program for increasing revenue of the state government this is a program for saving the life of the people by and large so whatever they want to take the decision it is up to them it is up to the state government they are the important stakeholders and the responsibility of the people of the state is with them how they can reduce the life to save the life of the people in the state that is also important agenda for them and i am very much positive about it in the due course of time they will take the appropriate actions But outside Nitin Gadkari's residence here in Delhi this was happening there were massive protests these are youth congress workers who are prote- protesting outside the transport minister's residence in Delhi are calling the new fines quote unquote daylight robbery the protesters even tried to throw a bike at the cops who had put up barricades to try and contain the protests Now it's been 10 days since the new motor vehicles act came into effect These are the highest fines that have been collected so far from one individual. The highest, the record in the country right now is 1.41 lakh rupees that was collected from a truck driver who was driving from Rajasthan into Delhi. He holds that ominous record. The second highest, 86,500, this time another truck driver but in Sambalpur in Odisha who was fined that. 59,000 rupees a tractor driver who was fined in Gurugram last week. 
47,500 rupees an auto driver who was fined in Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha. 32,500 rupees another auto driver this time in Gurugram. These are the individual highest uh, fines that have been paid uh, by folks across the country. Now, these people who have had to pay such hefty fines should take inspiration from this man in Vododra who's figured a way out of staying ahead of the cops on this story. Rampal Shah is so petrified of traffic penalties that he has stuck his driving documents on his helmet. Whether it's his driving license or pollution certificate or insurance papers, Shah's big black helmet has got everything covered. Royal Enfield पे घूमता हूँ, जिसमें ऐसी कोई जगह मुझे योग्य नहीं लगी कि जहाँ पे मैं डॉक्यूमेंट रख सकूँ, और हेलमेट में जब भी बाइक पे बैठता हूँ, मेरे बुलेट पे बैठता हूँ, तो हेलमेट पहले पहनता हूँ, तो फिर सोचा कि सब डॉक्यूमेंट्स इस पे ही लगा दूँ। Shah says his unique idea was hailed by the Gujarat police as it encourages everyone to wear a helmet. This man's stunt to escape hefty fines has also cracked up the internet. Now, even while some states are reducing these hefty fines, there are some things that they can and some things they cannot do. Now, what is it that the states cannot change? Well, the fine for drunk driving, which is 10,000 rupees, that is an All India fine. You cannot change that. Uh, if, you're, if you're a juvenile caught driving, the fine across the country is 25,000 rupees. States don't have the right to change that. Jumping a traffic signal, and this many are saying is the steepest, 5,000 rupee fine, again, states cannot change uh, that amount of fine. What the states can change, though, uh, are these. For not wearing a helmet or a seatbelt, uh, it can be anywhere between 500 to 1,000 rupees. For blocking an emergency vehicle like an ambulance, 10,000 rupee fine, and that can be changed. Vehicles which do not have a pollution under control certificate, the fine is 10,000, but states are well within their right uh, to change that fine. Prime Minister Modi today launched the National Animal Disease Control Program in Mathura and he put the spotlight once again back on cow politics. From petting cows and calves to supervising a cow surgery, Prime Minister Modi made a pitch for protecting the animal. गाय शब्द पढ़ता है तो उनके बाल खड़े हो जाते हैं उनको लगता है देश 16वीं 17वीं शताब्दी में चला गया Prime Minister Modi personally interacted with farmers veterinary doctors and plastic waste segregators He sat down with women who separate plastic from garbage and explained to them the importance of separating plastic so it did not end up in the stomachs of cows the opposition questioned the Modi government's cow policies. Well, you see, the, the, if the idea is to uh, protect uh, the cow and other animals, we have no objection to it. But what the Prime Minister had said was, you know, people get uh, worried and confused when uh, the name cow is uttered. Prime Minister Modi launched a disease prevention program for livestock in Mathura. The program also aims at vaccinating cows. Well, it's not just cows and it is certainly not just India because plastic is killing animals across the world. In Thailand, for example, a baby dugong uh, died recently of shock after ingesting, uh, ingesting plastic. In Italy, a pregnant whale died with 50 pounds of plastic found in its stomach. In Japan, nine Nara deer died after eating plastic bags. Former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu and his son Nara Lokesh were both placed under house arrest just as they were about to leave for a rally to protest alleged attacks by ruling YSR party workers. Chandrababu Naidu's son Nara Lokesh argues with the police when he stopped from participating in the protest. He says it is his fundamental right to protest, but the police say prohibitory orders are in place. The police locked the gates of Chandrababu Naidu's house in Undavali and did not allow his convoy to move out. Government is violating human rights and also fundamental rights. 
Many TDP leaders who are marching to Naidu's house were also detained by the police. The TDP plans to protest against alleged intimidation by the ruling YSR Congress party. Naidu's party claims eight TDP workers have been killed and several face threats from Jagan Mohan Reddy's party that completed 100 days in power last week. US President Donald Trump has fired his national security advisor John Bolton. That's the third NSA gone in the last two and a half years and the latest in a long list of churnings at the White House. 47 people have been fired by Trump in the two and a half years that he's been in office. The latest, of course, John Bolton, who was the national security advisor from April 2018 till September 2019, just over a year. His predecessor was uh, General H.R. McMaster, who was the NSA from February 2017 till March 2018. Again, just about a year. Michael Flynn was the first national security advisor in the Trump administration. He was NSA from January of 2017 till February of 2018. So all of them finishing exactly 13 months. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was his first Secretary of State. Uh, he was in that position from January 2017 till March 2018. Jim Mattis was the Secretary of Defense from January of 2017 until February of 2019. And the biggest one, the man many reckon was responsible for putting Trump in the White House, Steve Bannon, who was his chief strategist, lasted barely eight months from January 2017 till August 2017. Now, in September 2017, a seven-year-old was found with his throat slit inside his school washroom. Two years on, CNN News 18 does a status check on schools across cities in our country. Our first report is from Mumbai. This is a municipal school in South Mumbai. There is no security guard to stop us as we enter. We make our way to the washrooms, two adults, without anybody questioning what we are doing. There are no teachers and no attendants to ask us where we are going. Another BMC school also in South Mumbai. This one has a guard at the gate. But there is no one to stop us as we walk to the school playground. A guard walks by but doesn't bother to question the presence of two unknown adults in the middle of all these school children. This lax security is not limited to municipal schools. There is a guard at the gate of this private school located in Bandra. Okay. But we use the word office and he lets us in. The government for the child safety uh, rules and regulations, but it has not been done. It's not a uniform reality. Most schools take their security seriously, but it's a wake-up call for those who don't. Chaitanya Mangore for CNN News 18. Now, this is what we found when we approached the schools. Outsiders were certainly being allowed, and that too, without any checks. Uh, no ID proof was required or entries made in the register outside uh, the schools for these outsiders. What we also found was that outsiders have access uh, to sensitive places like washrooms and playgrounds where uh, students could gather in a group. Now, it's not just Mumbai because in Delhi NCR 2, our team approached eight schools, six of whom allowed us entry. Our first stop, a well-known private school in Noida. The first and basic layer of security at the school gate is cursory. The guard doesn't question us. So getting in is easy, no verification whatsoever. Inside, no questions are raised about our presence. We roam around the school with no one to stop us. We go near the washroom, there's no CCTV camera in sight. Another private school, this time in the national capital. The guards tell us there's no need to sign in. They don't even ask for our ID. Uh, 
We spend time walking around the school, the reception, corridors, even the washroom. We're not questioned once, either by security guards or staff. We make our way out without making the promised entry in the register. It's not necessarily true of all schools in the NCR, but proof of the yawning gap between norms and implementation. This is Sagar Gupta for CNN News 18. Delhi, Noida and Gurugram together have more startups than any other Indian city. Let's just break that down in numbers for you. In Delhi, there are 4,491 startups. In Gurugram, it's a little over 1,500, 1,544. In Noida, there's just a shade over a thousand. So that's a total in the national capital region of a little over 7,000 startups. In Bengaluru, which is a the tech capital of the country, considered the startup capital, there's just 5,234. That's about 2,000 less than the national capital region. In Mumbai, it's 3,829 startups. In Hyderabad, surprisingly low at 1940. And Pune at 1,593. It will revolutionize the media industry. Despite slumping iPhone sales, Apple is cranking it up all the way to 11. This is iPhone 11. The new iPhone 11 comes with two cameras. And if two cameras are not enough, One, two, three. the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max have three. Four if you include the selfie cam. It's a device the pros can count on to get their work done. Apple is hoping the new iPhones will change the media industry forever with the ability to shoot three to four different ways at once. Telephoto, wide, and new ultra-wide cameras. Next up, let's talk about Apple TV+. Plus. Apple also revealed new details about their streaming service. With original shows and movies, Apple TV Plus is going to be available in over 100 countries. And it is just $4.99 per month. The company also announced a new Apple Watch. Featuring an innovative new display, that is always on. A new iPad. And in what could be a sign of the company shifting focus, a new gaming subscription. The Apple Arcade. All right, so let's break down the price and the specifications of the brand new Apple iPhones. The iPhone 11, the basic model, it has a 6.1 inch LCD display, uh, dual 12 megapixel rear cameras, a dedicated night mode camera as well. It operates on iOS 13, A13 Bionic processors, uh, and of course the price in India when it's launched will be 64,900 for the 64 GB. The iPhone 11 Pro, it's slightly smaller in terms of screen space, uh, 5.8 inch OLED display though, uh, triple rear cameras, it's got 12 megapixel wide angle sensors, a A13 Bionic processor, and the price will be just a shade under 1 lakh rupees, 99,900 for the 64 GB storage. And the iPhone 11 Max, which is the biggest screen, 6.5 inches OLED display, triple rear cameras, uh, 12 megapixel wide angle sensor, A13 Bionic processors, and the price will be 1 lakh 9,900 for the 64 GB storage. News18.com's tech editor Vishal Mathur is in Cupertino at the Apple headquarters for the launch. We now have three new iPhones for this year. The iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The iPhone 11 succeeds the iPhone XR from last year, whereas the iPhone 11 Pro is the logical replacement for the iPhone XS, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max succeeds the iPhone XS Max. All three phones head to India before the end of this month, with prices starting Rs 64,900, which is actually lesser than what we had last year as the entry price point for the iPhone lineup. But despite these new phones, in the war for the smartphone market share, Apple is actually losing ground. Samsung, which is uh, as the market leader, as per quarter two of 2017, had a 22% market share. Quarter two 2019, its market share remains at 22%. Huawei, the Chinese phone manufacturer, in the second quarter of 2017, it just had an 11% market share. That's gone up by 5% two years on in the second quarter of 2019. That's gone up to 16%. And Apple has actually slipped Second quarter 2017, two years ago, it had an 11% market share. Second quarter 2019, it's gone down by 1% to 10% market share. 
Talking about tragedies, the Archbishop of Canterbury visited the Jallianwala Bagh National Memorial in Amritsar and apologized for the massacre that happened a hundred years ago. Lying face down on the floor, he said he was ashamed of the crime that was committed there. The Archbishop also read out a prayer seeking God's forgiveness for the atrocities at Jallianwala Bagh. You have remembered what they have done and their names will live, their memory will live before God. And I am so ashamed and sorry for the impact of this, for this crime committed here. But as a religious leader, I mourn the tragedy. A hundred years ago on Baisakhi, British troops under the command of General Dyer fired machine guns at a crowd of people holding a peaceful demonstration at Jallianwala Bagh. Nearly a thousand people, including men, women and children, were killed. The Archbishop's remarks are significant because many leaders and ministers from the UK have in the past tiptoed around the issue without giving a formal apology. India's wildlife is fast disappearing because of global warming. At least three species have been officially declared as extinct. The Indian cheetah, that's been officially declared as extinct. The pink-headed duck has also been declared as extinct. The great Indian bustard has also been declared extinct. There are also other animals which are on the verge of extinction. The Kashmir red deer is said to be critically endangered. The pygmy hog is also critically en endangered. Uh, the Malabar civet uh, is also uh, in a similar position. It's been critically endangered. Former bureaucrat uh, P.K. Mishra has been appointed as the new principal secretary to the Prime Minister. He replaces Nipendra Mishra, who resigned last month after a five-year stint as the top bureaucrat in the central government. There's a rift within the Rajasthan Congress uh, and it is widened. Deputy Chief Minister Sachin Pilot has lashed out at Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot over the deteriorating law and order situation in the state. Pilot has accused Gehlot of not being serious about the administration of the state. <laughs> Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar has come under fire for threatening a BJP worker. This happened during a rally where Khattar lost his temper and threatened to chop off the head of that BJP worker. The controversial video was shared by the Congress on social media platforms. Indian Railways is aiming to become the world's first 100% green rail network. Railway Minister Piyush Goel has announced that uh, the Indian Railways will be setting up solar panels on unused land that belongs to the railways. The Indian Railways will invest 18,000 crore rupees on solar power units along the tracks. A target of 100% electrification of tracks has been set for 2022. It also plans to shift to biodiesel instead of diesel for trains to acquire the tag of green railways. The Indian Railways plans to achieve the target of 100% green railways by 2029. Vehicle sales saw their worst drop in 20 years in the month of August. The country's leading car manufacturer, Maruti Suzuki, uh, in August of 2018, they sold just a shade under 1.5 lakh units. This uh, past month, in August, they've sold just 93,000 units. That's a drop of 36%. Hyundai Motor Corporation, in August 2018, they sold 45,801 units, uh, down by about 16% in August 2019 to 38,205 units. Honda has been one of the worst affected. August last year, 17,000 units, a little over 17,000 units, down by more than half. August this year, just 8,291 units. Uh, commercial car sales have also substantially fallen. Tata Motors, in August 2018, they sold 12,715 units, down by almost 60% exactly a year on in August 2019, down to just 5,300-odd units. Ashok Leyland, again, very badly hit. In August 2018, they sold 11,135 units, down by 70% plus in August 2019, just a shade 
over 3,300 units. Now, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had an interesting explanation for why car sales are falling. She said millennials prefer taking Olas and Ubers instead of owning their own cars. The mindsets of the millennials who are now preferring not to commit an EMI towards buying an automobile, instead would prefer to have Ola and the Uber and everything else or take the metro. Nirmala Sitaraman also blamed the new PS6 norms for the slowdown in the auto sector. The mobile sector in particular and the components together have been um, affected by several uh, things, inclusive of the BS6 uh, movement. The opposition hit out of the centre and accused Prime Minister Modi of fooling the common man. Finance Minister uh, you know, has demeaned them. The Finance Minister and the BJP government has, uh, is, is uh, desperately trying to cover up their mistakes and to blame it on, on millennial people, uh, children uh, generation is absolutely wrong and obnoxious to say. A remarkable, unbelievable statement by the Finance Minister of India reflects the inefficiency, the immaturity and the inexperience. Ola and Uber drivers say the Finance Minister's claims are unfounded. मैं काम में बहुत ही मतलब सन्नाटा चल रहा है काम दाम मतलब उस हिसाब से आज के एक दो तीन महीने पहले जैसा काम चल रहा था उस हिसाब से काम चल नहीं रहा है पब्लिक कम निकलती है यहाँ जो गाड़ी वाले जिनको जाना है उनको जाना ही है So is Nirmala Sitaraman right when she says that millennials prefer to take Olas and Ubers instead of owning a car? Now according to a study by Deloitte. If you were to break it by age group, in the senior citizens category from 55 to 75 years of age, about a third of them prefer Ola and Uber. Uh, in the 40 to 54 age category, uh, that's a shade under half. 44% prefer to take Ola and Uber. But if you look at millennials between ages 23 and 39, about half of them, a little over half, prefer to take Ola and Uber and the other half prefer to own a car. Like I said, this is from the Deloitte Global Automotive Consumer Study. Take a look at the sheer rise, though, of the number of Ola and Uber rides here in India in the last four years. In 2015, there were one million rides every day between these two cab aggregators. In 2016, it almost doubled to 1.8 to 1.9 million rides every single day. In 2017, that became 2.8 to 3 million rides per day. In 2018, the rate of growth was slower from 3 million to 3.5 million rides every single day. And in 2019, with eight months gone so far, it's been 3.65 million rides per day. So as you see, the rate of growth has been coming down over the last couple of years. Well, the market settled in the green today, led by gains in the auto, realty and bank stocks. Markets extended gains for the third successive trading session, with the Sensex adding 125 points to settle a little over 37,000, whereas the Nifty stayed just a shade above the 11,000 mark. The government's assurance of boosting the economy have helped pro prop up market sentiment. At least three batches of MDH's Sambar Masala were withdrawn from the US earlier this week after tests conducted by the country's Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, revealed that the product contained salmonella. The product was distributed in Northern California retail stores from which it was recalled. This is a bizarre story. A Goldman Sachs employee working at their Bengaluru branch has been arrested for allegedly siphoning off more than 38 crore rupees of company money to pay off his poker debt. Police have since recovered that money, which, by the way, the accused Ashwini Junjunwala was trying to transfer to a bank in China. Now, who would have thought that doing something as routine as drying your clothes could become dangerous? Take a look at this video. It was just another day for this elderly woman in Surat. She was putting out some clothes to dry on the balcony. But as she leaned over the railing to hang the clothes out to dry, the entire structure just collapsed. As the railing crumbled, the woman went hurtling to the ground floor. A family member ran out when he heard the crash. 
The fall was from the first floor, so the woman managed to escape with just some minor injuries. Dramatic scenes were witnessed in the heart of Kolkata where clashes erupted between BJP workers and the Kolkata police. Hundreds of BJP workers descended on Esplanade carrying flags and shouting slogans. They protested in front of the CESC headquarter over what they called excessive electricity tariffs. The police first tried to push back the protesting BJP workers with barricades. But when that did not work, they fired water cannons on the protesters. The BJP has accused the police of using excessive force, claiming that five of their party men had to be hospitalized after the clashes. And here's a look at what has been trending online. This heartwarming video of two toddlers running towards each other for a tight hug is melting the internet and making everyone say, this is how you should greet friends. A man in Mexico looked out the window and found this, a family of bobcats prowling in his backyard. Even his own cat couldn't resist taking a peek. There's three of them. No way. This guilty dog conveniently turns into a statue when his owner confronts him for stealing food. Who did this? What are you going to do? The guilt, though, cannot be hidden. No more. Okay? Expats have done a survey on the most dangerous countries to live and work in. And surprise, India features in the top five. It is at number five position. The most dangerous country to live and work in for expats, according to this survey, number one on that list is Brazil. Number two, South Africa, which has a history of crimes against foreigners. Number three is Nigeria. And number four is Argentina. The source is the expat insider survey. Stand-in captain Gurpreet Singh Sandhu was in inspired form as India held Qatar to a goalless draw in the second Group E FIFA World Cup qualifier. At least a dozen saves coupled with Sandesh Jingan and Adil Khan's partnership helped India steal one point away from the Asian champions Qatar. Cristiano Ronaldo scored four goals to take his international tally to 93 as Portugal claimed a 5-1 win over Lithuania in the Euro 2020 qualifiers. The Juventus forward, who scored his eighth hat-trick, is now just 16 goals behind Iranian legend Ali Dai's world record. The result keeps Portugal in an automatic qualifying place, five points behind Group B leaders Ukraine. A late goal from Luis Abram gave Peru a 1-0 win over Brazil in Los Angeles and handed the five-time world champions their first defeat in over a year. Abram nipped in ahead of goalkeeper Edison to nod home a free kick with just six minutes remaining to end Brazil's 17-match unbeaten run that began after the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Australia's coach Justin Langer has defended Steve Smith's celebration after some fans and pundits concluded that Smith was unkindly parodying the glasses-wearing Jack Leach of England. Smith was seen wearing and rubbing a pair of glasses before shadow batting left-handed. But Langer is adamant that Smith was mimicking Australia's Chris Rogers, who, like Leach, also wears glasses when he bats. With the visitors leading 2-1, England will look to level the Ashes 2019 when they take on Australia in the fifth and final test. Holders Australia are 2-1 up after registering wins both in Birmingham and the last one in Manchester. Under the captaincy of Tim Payne, Australia are eyeing their fifth Ashes series triumph in England since 2001. A top lashkar e taiba terrorist was gunned down by security forces in Sopor in Jammu and Kashmir exactly two days after the police busted a lashkar module in the back. Asif Makbul Bhatt was responsible for a recent shootout in which three members of a fruit trader's family, including a five-year-old girl, were injured. The attack was an attempt by Pakistan-backed terrorists to prevent the return of normalcy in the valley by intimidating the residents. Roaming around in the villages, going to the people, threatening them, telling them not to go, to, go, go for their daily course. 
On the 9th of September, Jammu and Kashmir police, along with the army and other security forces, had arrested eight militants from the Sopur region after busting a terror module of the Lashkar-e Taiba. The militants were planning to print posters threatening locals against venturing out of their homes. The national capital is all set to get three new mega hospitals in the next six months. The three new hospitals will have 2,800 beds in total. This includes the Indira Gandhi Hospital in Dwarka, which has over a thousand beds. 85% of the work there has been complete. The other two hospitals are, that are likely to become functional uh, in the next six months are a 600-bedded facility in Ambedkar Nagar, which happens to be in South Delhi, and a 772-bed hospital in Burari in Northwest Delhi. The target date of completion of these new hospitals is March 2020. Driverless cars may be the next big thing, but this video we're about to show you has raised a lot of questions about the safety of a car's autopilot system. The driver is literally asleep at the wheel. The co-passenger has also nodded off. And yet, this Tesla car continues to cruise along a highway in Massachusetts at 90 kilometers an hour. The car is on autopilot without an alert person in the driver's seat. The person who shot the video says that he tried to wake them up by honking his horn, but it didn't work. Tesla cars are equipped with an autopilot function, but the company says drivers are expected to remain alert with both hands on the wheel. The centre has restored postpaid mobile services in Kupwara in Kashmir after weeks of a communication blockade following the revocation of Article 370. Last week, all landline connections across the valley had been restored with the activation of telephone exchanges. In the Unnao case, the All India Institute of Medical Sciences today turned into a makeshift courtroom as the statement of the Unnao rape and accident victim was recorded. The testimony of uh, the rape accused BJP MLA Kuldeep Singer was also recorded, but he was not allowed to come face to face with the rape survivor. The Congress in Maharashtra is imploding as senior party leader Harshwardhan Patil joined the BJP today. So far, three Maharashtra Congress leaders have quit the party in the last 24 hours. That includes actor turned Neta Urmila Matonkar and Kripa Shankar Singh. Manchester City are the first ever football club in the world to put together a squad that costs over a billion euros. Here's a look at some of the costliest European clubs. Manchester City, like I said, has spent a little over a billion, 1.014 billion euros to put together this year's squad. Paris Saint-Germain, for which uh, Neymar plays, they've put together a squad at 913 million euros. Real Madrid, at one point, the costliest club in Europe, has put together a club, uh, put together a team at 902 million euros. Manchester United, significantly less at 750 million euros. Juventus at 719 million euros. No Liverpool there, the reigning champions of Europe. In Patna, when police were trying to do their job and check papers of bikers, they faced a hell of a lot of backlash. These young men were stopped by the police to get their bike papers checked. But instead of complying, they turned violent. They threw stones at the cops and beat them up with sticks. One particular police officer found himself surrounded by the mob, who then beat him up mercilessly. The cop was bleeding, his uniform disheveled, but the mob continued to drag and kick him along the road. In flood hit Madhya Pradesh, Four passengers, uh, 40 passengers in fact, were rescued from a bus that was caught in a riptide in Dhar. The bus with 40 passengers went off the road and got stuck in raging waters of the Narmada River. With the help of ropes, the locals and police officials tried to push the bus away from the downstream. Then the trapped passengers were pulled out through the bus's rear window. While others formed a long human chain to prevent getting swept away by the river currents. 
Unfortunately, all passengers were dragged to safety. Scotland's highest civil court has overturned British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's decision to suspend the UK Parliament, calling the decision unlawful. The court ruled that Johnson was trying to prevent Parliament from questioning the government ahead of Brexit. Arab nations have condemned Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plans to annex the Jordan Valley and the Northern Dead Sea if he were to win the upcoming general elections. Palestine has dubbed the move as illegal, while the United Nations says it would destroy any chance of new peace talks. After months of trade deadlock, China has waived off a tariff on 16 American goods, including shrimp, fish meal and cancer treatment drugs. The move comes ahead of the next round of talks between the two countries due in Washington. A cargo train turned into a ball of fire after it derailed in St. Louis, Missouri. The train was reportedly carrying a flammable substance that is used as a solvent. Firefighters are still struggling to douse the blaze. Residents living in the adjacent areas have been asked to evacuate. In a move that will impact many international students, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced the return of the two-year post-study work visa. Now, this means that international students will have two years to find work in the UK after they graduate. Currently, most international students who have bachelor's and postgraduate degrees can stay and work for only four months after they graduate. The Harvest Festival of Onam is being celebrated by Malayalis across the world. Here's how they've been ringing in the festivities in Kerala and, of course, among the diaspora. From decorating homes with pukalams to dressing up in the finest clothes, Onam celebrations are on in full swing in Kerala. The highlight of the festival is the traditional grand feast, the Onam Satya, which is nothing short of 20 to 25 dishes served in a banana leaf. The other highlights are the snake boat races and the pulikali or the tiger dance. The 10 day festival marks the annual homecoming of the legendary king Mahabali. Legend has it that on the second day of Onam, Mahabali visits people's homes. And it's time now for me to rush out of the studio for my own Onam Sadhya. Thanks for your time. Viewpoint up next with Bhupin Chaudhary.